To you two guys and fans, we need to talk about Kenjaku. After being missing for 15 chapters, the main antagonist is back. He has been plotting, cooking, and he wants all the smoke. This video is covering the event of chapter 240, 239, and we will talk about Kenjaku's masterclass for a bit. Alright, for those of you who have read chapter 239, you will know that at the end of the chapter, Kenjaku and Takaba started a 1v1. And right now, in chapter 240, it is not looking good for Takaba at all. Kenjaku was able to find out the fatal flaw in Takaba's powers. I'll get back to that in just a second, but I want to remind you all that Kenjaku is really the biggest up in the entire series. He put the entire Satoru clan on Parkwatch and for hundreds of years, he took measures to take them out of the picture. That right there is beyond dedication, that generational hatred. And now the Black Air Force gods have blessed him with that Gojo pack. Bro was watching Gojo's pack being delivered to stores near us in 4K. Anyways, Kenjaku was in the process of eliminating all the players in the calling games. That was made known to us in chapter 239. The reason for this is simple. He wants to trigger a binding vow that will allow the assimilation of Japanese people into Tengen. This assimilation is to make the people of Japan to get forcefully absorbed into Tengen to create beings of pure cursed energy. Kenjaku's plan has massive implications because through the fusion of humans and Tengen's powerful cursed energy, he aims to completely change the separation between the human and supernatural worlds. If he succeeds, it could result in a world where it's hard to tell. No, not it could, it will result in a world where it's hard to tell humans apart from curses, leading to a state of utter chaos. And what's funny about it is Kenjaku just wants to see this happening for the sake of it happening. Anyways, for this to happen, he has to reach the binding vows requirements. And one of those requirements are all the sorcerers in the calling games must die, including the likes of Maki, Itadori and so on. But I think his plan here is to eliminate the external sorcerers first and then focus on the main cast later because he already has Sukuna there. Paraventure any of them manage to live it out there alive, Kenjako has measures in place to ensure his own safety. This nigga Kenjaku was ready for even surprise attacks. He set up cost speeds that will allow him to monitor the amount of cursed energy within the calling games barrier so he would know if anyone left or entered that particular area. He also has monitoring systems around the area where Sukuna and Gojo were fighting. So he knows basically everyone's movement. There isn't going to be any surprise attacks on Kenjaku. At least not anytime soon. And what's really funny is how the heroes actually considered jumping Kenjaku. That goes to show how much of a threat he is. Because mind you, Gojo was still fighting Sukuna when Angel suggested they jump Kenjaku. Alright, really quick one here. Um, if you're enjoying the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does mean a lot to us. Plus, it's free and reversible. Thanks in advance. Alright, so while Kenny was killing sorcerers to trigger the binding vow, he ran into Takaba, who he didn't think much of because he immediately tried to one-shot him. And to his own surprise, his attack failed. No, his attacks didn't exactly fail. His attacks were forced into not working, as opposed to the attacks failing or not landing. But one could still call that failure, but anyways, after a few more attacks and an entire conversation about comedy with him, he realized his technique relies on self-confidence. For those of you who don't know Takaba, he is a comedian who failed in comedy and you know began jujutsu. When he obtained his uh, sorcery powers, he didn't know he had them. Until now, I'm not sure he even knows he has powers. And it's really ironic because he has some of the most busted powers in the entire series, but he doesn't even know how to use them properly. And with Kenjaku's realization, which brings on, which brings me to my next point. It's really easy to overlook how intelligent Kenjaku is as a villain when Tsukuna is present. Remember, the reason Tsukuna is even here in the first place is because Kenjaku wanted him to be there. Tsukuna is alive because Kenjaku wanted him alive. I'm not saying Kenjaku can kill him any minute, but I'm saying Kenjaku is the one who brought Tsukuna back, invariably anyway. Because remember. Kenjaku is the one who discovered reincarnation through cursed objects. Granted, I'm not trying to dispute Tsukuna in any way. I know Tsukuna is a genius in his own right. He is unbelievably strong and downright evil. I mean, humans are no more than livestock to him. But Kenjaku? Kenjaku is something else entirely. The length he would go to achieve his goals of bringing hell to Japan is insane. And honestly, Tsukuna is just a part of his plan. So far so good, the fight hasn't gotten all that deep, you know. Uh, Kenjaku is still managing to outmaneuver Takaba. And with the way the story is progressing, we might actually see Kenjaku win in the long run. Hey, boy, ain't no fucking way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. And I'm not just talking about Takaba, I'm talking about in the entire series. I don't think Takaba will fully take down Kenjaku. Currently in chapter 240, the way the fight is going, Kenjaku has the advantage. He's using Takaba's old tricks against him. He is playing with Takaba's confidence. He is using Takaba's jokes to beat him because that's basically how Takaba's powers work. You need to make him 
not believe he is funny because anything he believes is funny will just become part of his powers and you know just become part of a show to him so if you attack him and he thinks your attack is funny then that attack invariably doesn't work or at least that's how i think his powers work anyway my hypothesis for tekaba not dying here is we haven't seen the full extent of his powers as of yet and consistently characters that have been introduced to the story that hold some kind of significance to the story or in the story do not die till we somewhat see the full extent of the powers they've gotten to that point we've not seen Takaba's full potential as of yet so i don't really think it, it, gege is going to play with his character but gege is one crazy motherfucker and he's really hard to predict but that's my own conjecture another thing i do think is one way or the other kenjaku will get out of this and carry on with his plans or at most twitch his plans if he is indeed set back by Takaba in some way anyways that brings us to the end of this video if you enjoyed it make sure you leave a like and subscribe drop a comment on who you think would win and uh we have another video where we talked about the power scaling of a lot of youtube guys and characters which you can find here so you can click on that and yeah to take you directly to that video so once again thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one. Oh, and sorry for the shitty audio and i ain't worried about no nigga taking my breaks what you should worry about is me taking your bitch